And thank you uh, once again for joining us here on PM Express. On a Wednesday, we do one thing. We do the Manifesto Tracker. And that's what we are doing today uh, here on uh, PM Express. And I have with me uh, Carl, who, King Carl, with the consultant with the money, uh, who is going to join me tonight with the analysis of the two political, main political parties, their manifestos, when it comes to this particular area. And it is simply a case of examining the economy and the jobs debate. And that is what we are doing tonight. It is possibly one of the most crucial parts of the two manifestos. And it does space to wait till now to do it. And money has been cracking and, and working and crunching the numbers. We're going to go through that very shortly and give you a sense of what to believe and where to pitch your tent when it comes to the issues of economy and jobs, the two biggest issues that may decide this year's elections. Let's start, as always, what we do on PMS with Manifesto Tracker by breaking the numbers down. What we did first is, in essence, tell you, give you a picture of what the numbers are in terms of the share uh, promises. And, and, and Carl, we see that the NDC, in terms of economy and jobs, from what we counted, has far more promises on economy and jobs than the MPP. I mean, if you leave, you're doing the global counts, you, the overall number of promises. The Imani in 2016, for example, counted in the MPP manifesto 510 promises, right? I mean, if you translate that to 2020, they having been in government for four years, that has reduced to what we counted 143. And that sort of team runs through all the major sectors. And that is what we are seeing that the NDC has more numbers on economy and jobs than the MPP. I mean, that shouldn't surprise anybody. Another key thing that we observe is, uh, Carl, why is this important? We isolated tax and general incentives and reliefs that both sides seem to be putting forward in their manifesto as a, a promise, a vehicle for growth. Why, why is the tax incentive reliefs focus important? Yeah, so the, the tax reliefs and the, and the incentives are very key to drive growth. So the level of tax that government receives is also very key mm -hmm. and when the gdp is increasing you want to be able to raise the tax uh, you try to uh, uh, cover the tax gap and then try to raise more tax so the ndc has eight promises over there and then the mpp has the question is that will these promises that they have be able to drive the needed growth and then enable the government to re receive the ne needed uh, tax revenue that is so important to observe because i mean every country your fundamental, uh, you know, I guess, avenue for re developing development is tax. You look internal first. If you can't find it, then you go and borrow. It's the reason why we have such, you know, high levels of debt. And so you see them making a lot of promises around tax giving, tax reliefs, incentives. We are going to demonstrate for you why this is such a crucial point in addressing what the manifesto should do. And, and let's go straight into that, Carl. If you look at the tax incentives, let's look at some of the, this is a, a brief view of some of the key ones. Okay, so the NDC says small businesses will be exempted entirely from corporate and personal tax. Remember that the NPP has something similar in the 2016 manifesto, corporate tax reduction that wasn't done. Yes. I think they wanted to reduce from 25% to 20%. Yes. They didn't do it in four years. The MPP is promising something pretty similar to reduce taxes also. Newly established medium-sized companies that employ 20 staff will be exempted entirely from the payment of corporate income tax for one year. That is something that MPP and DC is promising. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the, the last one here, corporate income tax again for medium-sized companies will be reduced, they say, from 25% to 15%. They've gone far further than what the MPP promised that they haven't been able to exactly. uh, do. If you look at the MPP's uh, promise, and this is not all, we're just giving a snapshot of what they are promising, um, promoting the setting up of integrated local manufacturing industry to support housing sector through tax incentives. Um, so they, their approach is slightly different. I mean, using the real estate industry as a and means housing, to do it, yeah. housing. So they are using the housing uh, much more. What happens is that the MPP promised a lot of things that, uh, with regards to the tax, as the 25% to reducing it to 20% has not been done. So uh, remember that they are, they are kind of operating a continuity where you know, they knew that they, 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 they promised certain things that they, they want to still do. So uh, for this time, they focus on the housing and then try to look at that. 
uh, the manufacturing aspects also, the imp imports a bit. Yeah, so that's, so that's where the, their tax incentives is. And remember that in 2016 manifesto of the MPP, one of the key things they wanted to do was to move from taxation to production um, and to growth. I mean, because they accused the then NDC government of putting on a lot of nuisance taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And so they came in and wanted to reduce and scrap a raft of taxes that um, the previous government had, had yeah. put so, in. So let me also add, what happens is that the two governments seem to have some kind of a divergent view with regards to the treatment of tax, the VAT, how it should go, the, the, the splits, the NHIL. So you see that there are some difference over there, but they all agree that there's a need for the tax policy to drive the private sector as well. Okay, and uh, I'm smiling because there's something happening that you can see uh, in the backdrop. It will play out on TV very shortly because right after this, we're going to be joined by the Information Minister, Kojo Ponkrumah, and the, uh, a man who recently became a doctor, former F Deputy Finance Minister, Kei Sato Fawson, will join me. And they're already having their own debate uh, as off, off camera. But it, let's, it will play on camera very shortly. But what is this, Carl? This is important, is it not? What, what, what are we looking at? What, so, what table is this? So this is from the OECD. It is very important. It captures the tax to the GDP of Ghana. Okay, and let me explain something. Why are we showing you this? What we are trying to say to you with all that we are going to demonstrate is every manifesto, when it comes to the economy and jobs, must bear in mind the current realities of the economy, right? And must fix and propose policies bearing in mind the challenges we are about to demonstrate to you. In other, in other words, if the promises and the policy proposals does not bear these in mind, they are missing the point. True? Exactly. Okay, so let's demonstrate the key things that the manifestos should be paying attention to when it comes to the economy and jobs. First is how much revenue we are bringing in compared to how much we are producing as a country. Exactly. So for the tax to G GDP uh, uh, ratio, we see that Ghana's performance is way, way below the uh, African average. And that's, that shows that our tax effort is not commensurate to what we have to be receiving. Let me show you the, how we compare to the rest of the continent on that point. In other words, we are producing a lot. When you produce, you pay tax. Exactly. But what we're seeing is that our, how much we are making from the tax revenues doesn't match how much we are producing as a country. And here is it, Carl. If you compare to the rest of the continent, we are only beating countries like what? Uganda, Uganda Niger, Niger, Congo. Congo, Botswana, Madagascar. In terms of how much tax is coming in compared to how much we're producing. Exactly. And when we look at the, 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 the African average of 17.2, we see that we are way below. If you look at the, 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 the Latin America and the Caribbean, which is 22.8%, way below. For the OECD, still way below. So we see that we have a gap that we have to work on in the digitization. That's why we see that the two political parties have promises around that. Uh, they want to widen the, the tax, tax net rate. and all of that. Yeah. So we see that. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's Ghana there in black. And so that is pay attention to this. And, and whatever promise, and pay attention to what I said earlier. Whatever promise you bring forward must address the problem, must have this in mind. This is another key thing. If we are not, as a country, and as a poor country like Ghana, we are, we are still developing. If you are not getting your revenue to develop from taxes, we get it from international donor help. Mm -hmm. Now, this graph here shows us what is happening with the international donor help that we get, right? Exactly. So, so this is the story. official development assistance, which is the OECD's measure for the aid that they give, that is that the, the developing countries receive. And we see that Ghana got the highest uh, amount in 2011. That's 1.8 billion. Okay, that is under the NDC's watch. Exactly. They got the highest amount of international donor aid exactly. for the, to, to finance our budget. Exactly. Right? Now, in 2014, it decreased to 1.1 billion. Okay. And that, that's, that is what, what you see here. Exactly. That is the, that drop that you see uh, in here. Okay. And then it went back up. Was it in 2016? That, that's 2015. It went up, but it declined. So mm -hmm. we see that even before we have started the Ghana Beyond Age, the age was declining. So before. pay attention to the graph. So from 2015, 2016, it started dropping. And it's been dropping ever since. Exactly. Um, and that's by the time that the MPP took power in 2017, is, is significantly on the, on the lower you know, slide. Exactly. And I guess then that possibly might have exactly. influenced they're going to be on aid because aid is already dropping. It's dropping. And then the thing is that these aids go into the, those specific uh, uh, spending areas that governments does not really spend in. 
because the de development partners know that these are essential areas, they need areas, but government do not spend. So what it means is that as the A's are going, the areas that this investment go, the government has to also pay attention to those yeah. areas. So key point to note, whilst our taxes aren't, aren't you know, matching up, the revenue we're getting doesn't matching up, A2 is dropping. So you have two problems. The main problem that any budget, any manifesto document must address there. They, they will come to analyzing whether the manifesto promises to address this. And this is the same thing, right? Total non-tax revenue. This is non-tax revenue. Exactly. Right? Anything so, that is not coming from tax. Exactly. Apart from aid, there is uh, uh, the, the revenue from, from goods and services that government receives and those fines and the others. So we see that that aspect also is declining. So if you add the tax revenue to, to the non-tax revenue, you get the total revenue. So we see that... As compared to the average, our total revenue is declining, mm. whilst our expenditure has been increasing. increasing. It's, just, it's a bad place to be. And this is data up on 2017. We haven't even factored in 2020 where COVID is in. Exactly. And it's even making this even this picture even worse than it, it really is. Now, um, so this is just a summary of the point that we are trying to get you to, to pay attention to in terms of what the manifestos should be dealing with. This graph here tells that story exactly. of the... Of, of still the age. So... The, the GNI, which is, which is the gross net national income, captures the total income that Ghanaian businesses and Ghanaians receive. Mm. So if we capture the, that with regards to the aid, we see that the, the aid, the, the, the percentage has increased, plateaued, and it's now, it's now dropping. So it's still, cap yeah. still capturing the So issue. the key question I'll be asking is, okay, so in the wake of all this, where is both the MPP and the NDC going to get their money exactly. to finance this fantastic um sweet documents that they put forward trying to convince you to vote for them in the in this year's election we'll, we'll get into now um and, and, and by the way this is the debt stock question also right we see how it's been climbing um quite significantly we are almost at 300 300 billion exactly you know so so what happens is if your expenditure is decline is increasing and your revenue is declining you have deficit and that captures you borrow so we see that our debt is increased. But what we see over here is some level of restructuring of the debt. Yeah, that is by the this current government. Exactly. Long term. Exactly. So we, we are trying to move in for more long term loans, which will have lower rates so that we'll be able to pay instead of having the shorter ones, which are very high. Now let me show you the next table. That tells you how much we are spending. The monies that we are making in this country, what it goes into. Compensation of employees is taking it it's a huge amount. Exactly. So when we take the compensation and the interest payment, so the amount that government is paying to its employees and the interest on the loans, yeah. if we take that, that's the two of them. That's comparing the pre-COVID bu budget and the post-COVID budget is more than 55% of the total government so expenditure. Anything we make is consumed almost by the 55% by, by just these two elements here the compensation of employees and interest payment. The question is, what is left to do anything? You're going to use goods and services. That's going to give you some 8% 8, 8 of that is gone. Before it even comes to capital expenditure. Exactly. Okay, one of the things you see between the NDC and MPP is that the MPP did a lot of spending on capital expenditure. MPP, not so. Not so much. And so that tells you. So again, financing isn't there uh, for, you, for you to use going forward. And so what is it that both parties are, are promising to do in their manifestos then? And does it address the points that we've just uh, illustrated um, um, for you. We're going to go into the analysis of the specific ones, particularly two things that stand out for me. The CARES program, which is the, N, which is the N, MPP's um, major tool to fix the challenges that COVID has brought on and fix the economy and create jobs. And then the MP, NDC's reverse investment is a 10 billion, you know, big push, a lot of money. They are putting in there. But let's look at the, the, the so what, it, what are they trying to do with tax to try and sort of deal with the problem we are talking about? NDC is promising reviewing the Rent Act as the right tax incentives to landlords and real estate investors. Exactly. So what we want to ask is that what computations go into some of these things and what is the expectation of the NDC yeah. with regards to the problem? Because that there's promise. a lot of tax reliefs right. and tax waivers for the M M M NDC, import free tax waivers. Uh, guarantee credit to manufacturers, remove all taxes on wages and salaries. I mean, this is a time that you already don't have money already from taxes, and you're saying you're doing a lot of this. The question you're asking there is... The, the question was, what's, what's the back of the envelope calculation? The thing is, you can, you can give these incentives, and that can drive growth. Then you tax different... Di you, you put on different taxes, and then get the, the needed growth that you need. 
but you can also do it and it is ill-informed and it's not give you the needed uh, 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 growth. That so they need. must demonstrate to us how this leads in the long term to economic growth. Exactly. Okay. Or whether in the short term it cripples us even further. Because you have to win an election. Let's promise a lot of tax relief. Nobody likes taxes, by the way. <laughs> and so if you promise a lot of tax reliefs, then maybe people might vote for you. But in long term, what is the impact on the economy is a question that you're asking. Exactly. MPP has a few of those, but they are more measured in how they are promising the tax reliefs. They are telling that around um, houses. Yeah, so they, they promise that they'll, they'll, there's a project-based tax incentives for the private develop, developers, that's for the housing, and that's just specific to them. But there are some other areas. Uh, the question is that, is that all that they will have, or when they come to power, they will be putting on other ones, they will be making different policies. So there, there, there are a few more of, of these that you see. Again, NDC continues a trend about the tax cuts for jobs. Right. I mean, wh why is this important? Exempt small businesses from corporate and personal income tax and tax holidays to startups. Reduce uh, the, the corporate income tax from 25 to 15. We told you that earlier. The MPP doing something slightly different. OK, in 2016, they had reduced the corporate income tax right from 20, 25 to 20 to, to 20, 20 yes. percent. That hasn't quite happened. I think reality check might have hit them. Exactly. So the question to ask the NDC is. What is the guarantee that they can do this, especially within COVID? Exactly. You know? exactly. Um, I want to quickly also then move on to, the, to, to this particular uh, bit. What, 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 what do you see here? Yeah, so for the rural investor in incentives, that's uh, the NDC promise to give some incentives to the rural investors. The question is that what drives an, a typical investor to go to the rural areas to invest? The investor moves on opportunity. So if there's no opportunity in the rural areas, they will not go. Mm. So what government needs to do is to really drive that and then put up the, 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 the investments around that. And we see the MPP doing with the, 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 uh, food, food, the food, the, the plenty for food and jobs and all of that. But we have not seen so much about that. For the MPP, they promised uh, uh, in, to introduce regulatory flexibility for the small scale businesses to improve compliance post COVID. So they are this county, they, they didn't promise so much around uh, the, the things and the risk based tax audit system. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's the thing that struck me when it comes to what MPP is promising. They're very, very measured in what they are saying they will do, right? I mean, but when we come to the CARES and the Big Pro, you see the difference in terms of how much both parties claim want to spend. And again, it ends here. The, again, MPP NDC has promised to scrap the law banning the importation of salvage vehicles. This is such a key thing. It's almost a reversal of the MPP policy of encouraging the foreign direct investment in the area of automobile, get VWs, the Toyotas, etc. that are in. This policy almost reverses that. Exactly. So th th that is it. And the argument still continues around that. But the point is, is that when you scrap it off, it may help the, the, the local uh, importers that give the... So the salvage the vehicles hand. and the spin-off from there will be the Boso kind guys, all these jobs that it creates for them. I mean, you say that what the government is pursuing currently will cause job losses in that area. So exactly. those who import the jobs, the garages who sell, and then the, those who sell the spare parts, the Boso kind, there's a whole spin-off of effect, right? Exactly. A ripple effect that will happen. Exactly. But the reverses, if the NDC is pursuing this, but you scrap this law, then also the question the about... FDI. Yeah. So if, if the NDC also scrap it off, the FDI that may flow in, and the total change that we may see with regards to our transport system, if we have to go in for the Made in Ghana or the FDI coming in, we may not see that. So we have to look at it. Is there a balance that we have to put in or we have to do the, the two extremes? Well, I, both are in extreme now. I mean, exactly. because my question I'm asking is that what is the cost-benefit analysis for both? I mean, so if you bring in, if you scrap the law and VW is already in assembly, mm -hmm. they are creating jobs too. What, how many jobs is VW is going to, going to create? And how do you net that off to the job losses you have in their Boso kinds and those who import the Sabbath vehicles? Do they match up? Do, what, what brings you more? Okay, so that, I don't wonder how analysis has been done. I mean, we need to see the evidence. Yeah, so that is what that. we have to, those are the things that we want them to be engaging us with, yeah. providing some of those. I mean, we'll be out. trying to ask a few of those questions when we, when we sit, uh, by the way. Now, let's uh, look at the, 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 the other key things that the both parties are promising, all to try and jolt the economy uh, to life. I want to quickly move the free SHS is there. I mean, government is still going to spend a lot more in this area. But I want, to, um, I want us to look at 
this slide. But this is the this is the slide that I guess that's it for me. Okay, so the, the NDCs, the first two items at the top, key, watch it. The big push for the NDC, 10 billion, rapid infrastructure development for jobs. It's almost the main vehicle for creating jobs for them, but also help grow infrastructure. The MPP has Ghana Cares program. Now the Ghana Cares program is in two forms, right? It's two phases. Exactly. Phase one, and I put the numbers together, they're projecting to spend almost more than 2.8 billion CDs. And guess what, between July and December of this year. So we are two months to go. How much of the money have they spent? Have they even raised it? I mean, we interrogate that. Yes, Carl, what so, would you say so about that? So that's the issue. We want government to be open about this, be accountable about it. Where is the money coming from? The Minister of Finance did a presentation to the investors and then captured some of these things. The government will bring in 30%, 30 which is 30 million Ghana cities, whilst the private sector will rope in the 70 million. But we, we are not so clear. And then what are the target firms that will be firms that will be targeted because you want to revitalize, you want to support the private sector. Which specific ones will be revitalized? What are the things? We have to get the clarity about uh, that. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that is a key question because if you look at the phase two, which is just three years, 2001 to 2023, government is budgeting to spend 100 billion CDs. That is huge. And of course, government is going to fund 30 billion of that. Hoping that something will not come from the private sector. But private sector is such a such an unruly, unpredictable animal, right? As we've seen with 1D1F. If they are not excited, they're not putting up the they're not putting up the factory. Mm -hmm. If they're not excited, they're not gonna give you the 70 billion. So what's the guarantee they're gonna get this? But it, but that's three years. Almost 20 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. The NDC is spending 10 billion. They're promising to spend 10 billion in five years. I mean, which is more realistic, I guess. So so this is it. The NPP is promising hundred billion. Million, million Ghana. That's Ghana cities. No, so there's a hundred billion cities for, for okay, three yes, years. Yes, exactly. That's the second phase. The second phase, okay. And then there is the first phase, which is a combination of monies that they're spending in total of some 2.8 billion plus, okay? Exactly. So if you add out all that together, from first phase to second phase, that's, that's a exactly. lot of money. The NDC's question is 10 billion. Where are they going to get that money from? It's a key question that both will have, have to answer. Exactly. So the where is very key. Let's get the, 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 the clarity about that. Even before we go into the election, we want to get where exactly they will be getting it. So that we'll be sure. These are some of the things that the, 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 the electorate should be aware of before even going to the polls. What about jobs? I mean, one million jobs for four years. That's, that's the NDC's claim. I just mm -hmm. noticed in the MPP manifesto that they claim they've created two million jobs and they want to grow that. I wonder where are the jobs exactly. But they're also promising 200 million jobs, uh, 200 million dollars for jobs and skills projects. Exactly. Right. So we see that the N NDC seems to integrate the job narrative across board. So they say different projects that they will, they will say that they will create 250,000 for each, each year for the four years. But what we want to see for the NPP as well is to see for the, for the 2020 manifesto, how many jobs would that create so that, so that we, we hold them accountable when the time comes. True, I didn't Not see that. When we get to the fourth year and then they, they, they chain out numbers that is 2 point something million yeah. jobs. So want to have, have that as a literary as And then the same question will apply to the NDC as well. One million jobs, where? Where exactly in the economy are you going to create that? Is this, um, um, remember that they said they're going to make the narco jobs permanent. Are they talking about narco jobs plus, uh, what is it? Where exactly is the jobs exactly. going to come from? And, and for us, we, we believe that the, gov the business of government is not to be creating jobs. So the narco government issue? Government should create the environment for the private sector to create the jobs. Because for the public sector jobs that government create, they seem to be schemes just to support the people, kind of a social scheme. But we want sustainable jobs that the people can have. Okay, there's a key question about sustainability in the jobs. But you think that the MPP with this tradition and philosophy will, will move away from and create a nibble environment for, for the jobs to be created by the private sector. But they brought in NACO. The NDC says they'll keep NACO and enhance it, even do better because they're going to give permanent jobs. So both of them like that vehicle exactly. of creating jobs. Now, the, if you go again to some of the key things, NAPCO is here, as we, which you've commented on already. The NDC says they're going to set up and the, and the free national apprenticeship program, again, to give people skills so they can employ themselves. Uh, we've seen the Creative Arts Fund that the N, 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 NPP says they're going to set up. They also want to set up the entrepreneurial hubs for small businesses. Exactly. So the hubs across, there are different, some uh, agreed some for the, so the, the thing is that all of these are initiatives but we want to see how they are growing and wants to see how government is able to target them specifically so a lot of great interventions 
the key question always is the devil is in the detail. After this break, we are going to be interrogating the detail and finding the devil in the detail, if you may. Um, we're going to focus in primarily on these two big items here, and then we'll break it down from there because the line, those are the line items that carry a lot of weight. And we'll break it down further from there. This is going to be one of those things that you don't want to miss because Kodio Ponkroma is here, the information minister. Uh, Kesela Tofosing is also here. Let's subject some of the promises to some scrutiny. They are going to be selling their respective promises to you. Hopefully, they hope to convince you. I'm just going to moderate and see uh, if I can get you to understand and make a decision where to pitch your tent on December 7. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. Kojo Ponkrumah and Kisato forcing up next. Thank you very much for joining us here on uh, PM Express. My guest uh, in the studio tonight is uh, the Information Minister, uh, Kojo Opon Nkrumah, uh, who is still very busy trying to um, settle and, and put his uh, manifesto in order uh, as we begin to look at the details. Also with me tonight is Kesel Atoforsen. Kesel, I was wondering whether I should add the doctor or I should just simply... Don't worry, I'm not into titles. Okay. <laughs> but but you, are, you are formerly a doctor, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, you have to congratulate him. Dr. Forsen. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank, you. Um, thank you very much for making time to join us. I mean, let, let's, let's, go to the, let's go straight to the, to the meat of this because the, I want to start with you, Kesel, because the, I want to start with your... With your, you, you, you are seeking to dethrone the, the MPP. Um, you, you promised 10 billion um, big push, okay? And it, when I read it, it appears to be your main vehicle for creation of jobs, but also infrastructure. In fact, this is how you, you put it in your, in your manifesto. Implementing a big push infrastructure development and, and economic transformation. And you say the Big Push initiative will involve an investment of $10 billion over five years to achieve that critical upgrading social and economic infrastructure to create platform for the transformation of our economy in furtherance of our one million jobs plan. So there's a lot resting on that. But the key question that a lot of people have asked, and I still haven't had the clarity to this, is $10 billion is a lot, is a lot of money. How are you raising this money to finance this great uh, intervention. Thank you, Evans. Evans, um, it is not in doubt that our economy is in a mess. No doubt about that. Prove today, it. Though. Prove it. Today, we spent 73.6% of our revenue to service debt from 56.1% from 2016. So you can see the change over the period. Today, I read somewhere the central bank warning that if care is not taken, government is going to struggle to service a debt. Where is that evidence? Oh, yes. I just saw something straight away on one of your platforms. Join us. The Platform. central bank said that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we'll we go. We'll, 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 we'll fact check. We'll come to fact check that. Now, it is clear that there's a lot of un unemployment situation in the system. People are complaining of jobless. Uh, Government has job repeated two billion. Two, two million, million jobs. Come to that. Evans, it is a fact that businesses are collapsing. In fact, the rail sector is going down, very down. And so, therefore, there was the need for this economy to be revived. A recovery plan is required. How do you do that? We, the NDC, believe that we should put together a robust plan tackling all the four sectors of the economy. The fiscal, both expenditure and revenue. The monetary, not necessarily concentrating on price stability, but also development. We need to tackle the rest sector head on to ensure that the average Ghanaian get a better share in the economy. We also needed to address the issues relating to the external using, again, fiscal policy to address that. So our fiscal policy is robust. Now, to your specific question on the big, big push. Yes, Evans, as I said, the big push is one of our expenditure measures. Biggest expenditure? Yes, one of the biggest expenditure 
items. Recognizing that there's a lot we have to do as long as our expenditure is concerned. And therefore, if we are to rely on the medium-term expenditure framework of government, we cannot be able to establish that. And that is why we in the NDC adapted a development economic model called the Big Push to ensure that we can address this matter head on. How do we do that? If the Big Push has two legs, social infrastructure and commercial infrastructure. And I'll take you to the graph here. And if you look at the commercial infrastructure, let me take you to the commercial infrastructure. I have the map. So if you look at the commercial infrastructure, mm. and what we call the transport plan, so we have three key things in the... Is that the, is that the, the That's map? the big push. Okay. So we have the big push, the transport plan, 2021 to 2025. Mm. And if I may take my time to take you through. You have the Eastern Corridor Project, the Golden Triangle, and the Western Corridor Project. Let me start with the Golden Triangle. Evans, it is sad that as a country, after 60 something years of independence, we have not successfully linked three major cities of our nation through highways, major highway and railway. So, is that a triangle that you've drawn? That's in the, the triangle middle of the, of that, 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 that I'm showing you. Okay. So, you can see the golden triangle. So, that road is going to go? Yes, it's going to go up and come down. And come down. Mm -hmm. So, what we are hoping to do is that we are going to connect Accra, Accra Tema, through Cape Coast and Takradi and take it all the way up through Kumase, but we are going to extend it to Kintampo. And so you can see the triangle there. So what we are saying is simple. We're going to use a expenditure measure to open up the country. And in doing so, we are putting up a three carriageway inbound and outbound between Accra, Kumase, and Kintampo. We are also saying we are putting up a three carriage motorway, Accra, Cape Coast, Takradi, and another Accra, Kumase, and Kintampo to complete the triangle. There's not in doubt that doing this alone is not just infrastructure you are putting out there. You are creating jobs. You are opening up the economy. You are connecting this country together. In fact, I could be able to live in Cape Coast and come to work in Accra if the economy is open up, if there is enough road. To the extent that there's railway, to the extent that there's major highway. So we are not just going to look at a solution where you're going to put up um, um, just a highway, but we are going to connect it with railway as well. And we're saying the plan is over a five-year period, 2021 to 2022, uh, to 2025. Even as apart from that, I'll take you to the Western Corridor. The Western Corridor is very important for us in the sense that if you are to look carefully, what we intend doing here is simple. We are putting up a railway line that will start from Sekendi Takradi to Axim. It will connect all the way to Elubo, extend to Enchi. From Enchi, we extend it to Asawensu, Gosu, take it to Sunyani, Wenchi, all the way to Bamboy and Bali, and takes to Sola, with the hope that we can connect it all the way to Wa, Nadoli, and Hamile. So if when we get to Hamile, we are creating an inland port at Hamile. And I'll tell you why we're doing this. We will extend the second Takradi port and dedicate that port as the dedicated port for the Sahel region. So if you are in the Sahel region, let's say Burkina Faso, and you intend to ship using the ports of Ghana, the things will get to Takra the port and you use the railway line. So it goes straight all the way to Hamile. And we, use, we chose Hamile for a reason. If you look at the Burkina Faso carefully, the commercial part of Burkina Faso is closer to Hamile, not Paga. And that is why we chose Hamile for that reason. And we felt that that alone you have created an avenue of business in that enclave, the western um, part of the north, uh, upper west region. And so therefore, the vehicles coming all the way from Burkina Faso to take the things from Tema Port to Burkina Faso will not be using the roads now, and then it will go, it will go out there. Yeah. So they will be able to dedicate that. Yeah, but, but that, that, that doesn't begin to address the, the question about how you fund all this. I'm, I'm, coming, to, I'm coming to the funding. Yeah. So what we are saying, simple. I, first of all, I need to explain what we, we intend doing, and I mm. come to the funding. Mm. Now, remember that when these goods go all the way from Takradi to Hamile, and the people pick it up there, the, the trains will come. When they are coming, they may come empty. They may take passengers. Mm. Okay, so not just empty. They will be coming with passengers, 
And the very enclave we are talking about, that is where the cocoa is. So they'll be able to haul cocoa to the ports of Takradi and ship it out there. So clearly, this is a commercial venture. This is a commercial venture, as you see it. As we said, we have successfully proven that we can, as a country, be able to do a major project and the project will be able to survive on its own. Which, what is the evidence? A commercial project. Yes. T3 is doing well. T3 is doing well. It's on their books. So why can't we do that? This is a commercial project. And so it can survive on its own. And that's why I said, I started by saying that the big push has two legs. It has two legs, the commercial part, and indeed the, um, the other one that we talk about, the, um, um, the social ones. Yeah. So clearly, we, we, we believe that, that that can be done. But, but, the, so, but the social the ones, they're not I'm coming to the social one. I'm coming to the social they, ones. They don't, they don't give you anything in return. No, no, no. The social ones, certainly you are not going to get something in return. Yeah. That is not what I'm saying. But the commercial ones will give you something in return. Yeah, which ones? I, I see the list here. So, so, I see a tall like. list of things you want to mm -hmm. spend. A lot of them are social the, interventions. I, I'm, I'm going on the map, and I'm showing you this. I'm referring to page 25 of the manifesto. Yes. That, that's where I am. Yeah. 25 of them. I mean, I'm, I'm on 20, 20, yes. 25 also. Yes. So, so that's because what I'm I see you. rail line. Yes. I see dual carriage yes. road. I see inland port at Hamile. Mm -hmm. Expansion of Takarade port. Mm -hmm. I see Takarade Kumasi Kintampo. I see, I mean, this is the Golden Triangle. The you Golden Triangle. <coughs> Eastern Corridor roads, port infrastructure, Keta. Uh, um, which of these, for example, primarily is going to bring you back the money? Okay. To pay, to pay the expansion of the Takarade port will, will give you the money back. Okay. The railway line taking you all the way to Hamile will be self-financing. Because it does two things. It takes the goods all the way to the Sahel region and creates a port there in Hamile. In fact, coming back, it brings passengers and also it takes cocoa to the shores of Ghana. In fact, it takes you to Takrade port for it to be carried away. So it is financing, run the model. I'm telling you that the Golden Triangle is self-financing. But the gold, golden triangle we're talking about, railway line from Accra to Kumasi, can't pay for itself because it's commercial. In fact, even if there's some social element, it cannot be more than 25% of the social element. 75% so chance that it can pay for itself. But you need to get the money first to find out. No, you have to get the money first. How are you going to get the see, money? So let me tell you. Let me give you something. I was going to go to the Western Corridor and then come yeah, to you. Let, let me give you some reality. The because the, yes, the, the, the OECD yes. just re recently released a report. And they say that external public finance inflows to developing countries could drop by 700 billion in 2020, get even worse mm -hmm. after that, compared to 2019 levels. And this will exceed the immediate impact of the 2008 global financial crisis by 60%. So the regular sources of funding are drying up. So why are you going to get the funds to do this? Plus, as we demonstrated in the analysis, your tax bracket is almost gone. COVID I'm, is I'm, I'm going to come there. I mean, that even is a worse. Matter, that, that's a matter I wanted to address. But since well, we come on. I mean, we have a lot of time. We have one more hour to do this. Fantastic. So, so but you have to address that for me. In, the, in this context, where yes. do you get the money to okay. finance in the first place? Um, I have this to show you. And if, if you can project. So this is Eurobond issue and Akufuado. And, and I want to prove you something. Prove, prove something to you. You see, in the last four years under President Akufuado, They've issued 8 billion US dollars worth of euro bond. Largely, they decided to use it for consumption. Largely. Because indeed, the, the, the evidence shows that there's not enough capital expenditure in the budget to support this 8 billion. And the evidence su su supports this. They can decide to use 8 billion for the purposes of consumption. But I'm telling you, the NDC, we are not going to use 8 billion US dollars, go to capital market, borrow 8 billion for consumption. So if they can use 8 billion for the purposes of consumption, who says that we can use 10 billion to build infrastructure? And I'm also telling you, the recent banking sector cleanup alone, the mess that this administration has created, cost the nation in excess of about 5 billion US dollars. 5 billion US dollars. And 5 billion US dollars, you're using 5 billion US dollars of taxpayers' money to collapse businesses, to close banks, create jobless, uh, job losses, and in the end, you think someone cannot use 10 billion US dollars to create infrastructure and create jobs. So your point is the money is there. The money is there. It's how you use it's it. We can. And I'm telling you, it's, it's how you structure it.
Okay, oh, oh, and now I'm telling you, we have two legs. One of them can pay for itself. And another and one is like, social. Another one is social. Oh, hold on, I want to bring you those ones into the budget. Bro, bro, so, so that's the point about, it says, you, you, it, it, it proves the evidence to show that you've borrowed so much in issuing euro bonds for consumption. They can do same, but invest it in infrastructure and create jobs and boost the economy. My turn. Yes. Um, Evans, thank you. And um, good evening once again to our tour and to our viewers uh, back home. I'm not sure in the last 10 minutes as I listened to him, I got a sense of how much of the 10 billion um, is coming from where and how much they as GOG, if they become GOG, are able to put up. I don't know if you got that sense. He just said the money is there. It's how you specifically it. come back to specifically it. Specifically, he hasn't addressed the specifics of where the money is going to come in, from. In, but in the you, last he have minutes. two legs. He has two legs. Yeah, so social, how much is coming? Yeah, and then how much indeed, is social? And then what we say, the social will not exceed 3 billion. Is it, so 3 the, billion is... Seven, seven is it 25% of the, that? The, the 7 billion is self-financing. So, completely. So, so, and you have used 8 so, billion for consumption. No, no, and no. I can just use to get billion understand that. Before I even start. So what you're saying is that 7 billion from private investors. You see, private investors is a generic word. I don't want you to use that word. Okay, so what Self-financing I'm talking about. What does that mean? You see, self-financing is you can create a special purpose vehicle. A vehicle that can borrow on its own balance sheet. A vehicle that can invest and in the end pay on its own. Just like we, we have the Tema, uh, what, what do you call it? The, 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 the airport company. The Kotoka International Airport. And, 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 and it's paying for itself. So it is not just private. But when we're it's saying done. it can do. It, it so so let, let, let's, let's, hear, let's hear it. When I'm done, I'll show you from page 25 of their manifesto uh, where he's hiding the answers. What essentially they are not telling the Ghanaian people is that if they get the mandate, what they are going to end up doing is to leverage the Ghana in, uh, Infrastructure Investment, Investment Fund, Fund, securitize it, borrow $10 billion to add to our contingent liability, and hope to put it to this kind of thing. In fact, uh -huh. I, I, it's implicit. I, I flagged, I flagged. Uh, that I'll, I'll, that I'll is all that is going around. Just, just let me quote, let me quote, let me quote yes. that. It says, restore the transfer of 2.5 million percentage points of existing yes. VAT yes. to the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Yes. And then the gift that. was established by the job, yes. and it goes into yes. has the potential to create 1 so million jobs. I gift, even okay. go, what is so we'll come to that, because that's one of the things that I really okay. want to interrogate. So, let me have my turn. What is wrong? What is what is wrong with what that? I will come to that. Okay, but we'll you see, you should be upfront with the Ghanaian people that listen. What we really seek to do is that if we get the mandate, we will seek to securitize GIF and raise ten billion and hope to use it for infrastructure. And then we can get into the consequent analysis of debt sustainability, its impact, and all of those ones. But this social and self financing, and the way you ask about private investors, is uh, going around in circles. But I'll come to it. First of all, Evans, we cannot have a conversation about manifestos in the future without answering first the question of who is talking and what is his track record. There's no doubt that Ghana's economy will require a medium-term recovery program between 2021 and 2024 because COVID has shaken all that we have achieved in the last three years, not just us. The global ecosystem has been shaken from Germany to, uh, to, to, to the UK, to the US, to Japan. Global economies have been shaken because of COVID. So it stands to reason that uh, post-2021 to 2024, we will need an economic recovery program in the medium term to get back on track. Mm. Now, we will need that because in the last three and a half years, or in the last three years or so, everybody agrees that Ghana was doing a yeoman's job. If you take the macro indicators, the fiscals, if you take the real sector growth, if you take its impact on the average life of the Ghanaian, we were doing a yeoman's job. Our friends on the other side continuously contested it. But over and over again, anybody who was very good at this game, following the numbers, uh, would once again make that point clearly that Ghana had recovered and was on a good track. It's COVID that has dealt us a blow. But if there's somebody to recover this economy, mm. it's not our colleagues on the other side. And you've seen how even their big push, my good friend is struggling to explain how they intend to go about um, this good push argument. Very simply put, the first time they talked about a $10 billion infrastructure program aimed at delivering any sort of benefit to the people of Ghana was during the era of Mr. Mahama when they sold us the idea of the Hope City. It may sound like a funny subject, but that was the first time they sold us a $10 billion infrastructure program. But that's a private... No, it partner, was a public-private partnership, partnership when yeah. Mr. Mahama came to cut sword around wager explaining to us how self-financing, the same expression, which is why I threw him the bait of, um, 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 is it private investors? Is it self-financing? They were going to build this infrastructure. It was going to lead to technology and jobs, etc. Mm. And by the time they were leaving power, beyond the shortcutting, not much had happened. I want to take you to the 2012 manifesto, very simply. 
and look at their big infrastructure plan, and you tell me how much it differs from what he has just told us this evening. And then we can make a determination whether or not any of the things that they are talking about are even worth paying attention to. And if you go to their part of the manifesto that deals with, take roads and railways. You've heard him talk about roads and railways. So, for example, they say they are going to do the Eastern Corridor, Tema, Isikuma, Ho, 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 Jasikan, Yendi, Narerugu, Kulungungu, with Nkwanta. In which the document are you quoting from? I'm quoting from their 2012 manifesto. 2012. Yeah, yeah. Which they implemented from 2012 to 2016. They have four years to Four years to implement. And they say Eastern Corridor, Tema, Isikuma, Ho, 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 Jasikan, Yendi, Narerugu, Kulungugu with Nkwanta in the Volta region, please listen to this, as an inland port. Mm. You've heard him talking about ports and why it's important to connect these ports. You would ask yourself, where are these projects? They never did them. Mm -hmm. Take the Western Corridor. They talked about Elubu, uh, Asemkrum, Enchi, Gosu, Sunyai, Bamboy, Boli, Wahamile, with Gambia number two in the Brongavu region as an inland port. Where is it? Atu, after four years. They said Central Spine, Accra, Kumasi, Techiman, Tamale, Bogatanga, Paga with Buankra in the Ashanti region as an inland port. We are now working on the Buankra project. They had four years. Um, then on railways, they waxed very lyrical about it. I don't want to even go too much into it. So the first thing that comes to mind when you hear them talking about the big push, where they are even hiding the source of funding of the 10 billion, is what is their credibility when it comes to similar conversations? And it is quite clear that the last time they made similar promises to the people of Ghana, these promises, by the time they were leaving power, had not been touched. So the question that the average Ghanaian asked, because your proposition was that in the end, the Ghanaian will have to make a decision where to pitch, where to pitch their tent. And the question the Ghanaian will be asking themselves is that, are these people that I can even bank my hopes on when they start talking about big pushes and all of that? Secondly, or thirdly. But, but, thirdly. but, but, but before I come to thirdly, on the general subject of capital expenditure, yes, though, yes. this is a government that is track record on that in terms of infrastructure investment. Yes. It's on parallel compared to yours. We dispute that. I'll come to you, that you, one. You do. We do. Because I'll come I, to I, I just want to cite you one example. I will come to that. If but I just may land with my argument, I'll come do, to because that. Because to interrogate I'll that. I'll come to that. Now, secondly, about four years ago, when they mooted this whole infrastructure argument, they said they were going to set up the Ghana um, Infrastructure Investment Fund, GIF, which they did, hmm. backed it by law, and uh, made the argument that it was going to be the panacea to our infrastructure problem. Which so, you have refused to fund, Today, by the way. well, because we have a different proposition to it. And but I there's explain a law. That. There's well, a law that says funded for two consecutive years you refuse to put money in the gift. Yeah, they passed the law to ban Okada. Did they implement it? No, we passed the law. No, no. So you're saying, you're saying passed, that, no, because so governments make because choices. Because somebody breached the law. No, no, it's governments okay for them make choices. choices. Governments make choices. We passed the law for the Venture Capital Trust Fund. How much did they fund it? So that's a different debate. I'll come to that. Now, one of the things that needs to be answered in this new proposition mm. is what happens to GIF. Is GIF being abandoned? Is this a compliment to GIF? They are enhancing or, GIF. I'm coming. Or is it the reality that what they are seeking to do is to use GIF to leverage and borrow? And essentially, and you have just done analysis of where our debt position is, is today. Yes. And how come anybody seeking uh, the realms of power should be mindful about generating revenues and not burdening um, the already burdened status of our national economy? Mm. And it's important for them to be clear on some of these things. But be that as it may, the MPP has an alternative argument when it comes to building the Ghanaian economy or to rebuilding the Ghanaian economy. First of all, in the last three and a half years before COVID hit, we have demonstrated clearly that we have the competencies to restore macro stability, different from what we inherited from them. And the numbers, I mean, I think you've gone over and over and again, I'm not too sure if your viewers are even interested in these numbers anymore, but the numbers speak for themselves. If you take, for example, the macro numbers, take, take, take growth, and it's not just about President Akufuado and President Mahama specific. It's about the MPP and the NDC. If you take growth, 2008, old series, Kufuado was ending around 9.1%. President Mills, the old President Mills, mm. did 11%, did 14% did in 2011. Very specific, yeah. That was his last full yes. fiscal year. Mr. Mahama ended up at 3.4% 3. 3. Yeah. in 2016. And the MPP administration is the one that brought it back up to 6.5. When you start talking macro, because you know all of this conversation that we're having is about who has the ability to deliver a strong macro foundation, generate good fiscals out of it, and use those fiscals to invest in the real sector, therefore ensuring that you have jobs, you have incomes, and you have further opportunity for Ghanaian people. Take, um, 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 for example, non-oil GDP. President Mills did 8.2, because you recall that at the time President Kufo, we didn't have non-oil GDP per yeah. se, so everything was composite. President Mills did 8.2. President Kufo, because it was all together, did 9.1.
um, President Mahama dropped down from President Mills' 8.2 to 4.6. We are the ones who brought it down to 5.8 in 2019. If you like, go into the specifics. If you take agriculture, agriculture, for example, President Kufo left agriculture 7.4. President Mills took it down to 0.8. 2016, they brought it to 2.9. We've brought it back up to 4.6, planting for food and jobs, rearing for export and rural development, um, planting for export and rural development, rearing for food and jobs. So the macro numbers themselves show clearly who has demonstrated a certain track record. We don't believe that um, restructuring the Ghanaian economy is about putting all your attention and your emphasis on, for example, one segment, i.e., let's say, construction, and seeking to do, for example, a $10 billion investment in construction. And by the way, if you look at there are 1 million jobs, if you read page 25, the devil is in the detail there. Those 1 million jobs they are talking about are supposed to be from those construction activities. Oh, you don't know what you're talking it about. Is there. You don't know. You it don't is know. There. We'll come to the jobs question. We'll come to the jobs question. So if you brought in it, if you brought in it, if you brought in it, if I just may land, when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to industry, when it comes to services, we have a demonstrated track record between them and us. A, who delivers on their promises, and B, who delivers better numbers in these areas. Yeah, but you so we don't begrudge them for their refreshed $10 billion infrastructure plan, which, as I have tried to demonstrate to I you, hope you've made a lot is of really not new. There's a lot yes, to respond yes, to. But we have a clear alternate proposition, and as which, we which go is, through which the MPP, which is a curse. I'll have an opportunity which is a curse. I, I, to I want you. I want you, in the next two minutes, lay out the curse for me, because you also have the same challenge with funding that. In fact, you, you also seem more ambitious. And for a government in power, knowing the analysis we just did with the fiscal constraints that we currently have with COVID, I'm surprised to learn that you want to spend 10, 100 billion 100 cities. Billion, yes. 100 billion cities in three years. Yep. Right? Yep. That's not all. And let, let's, let's start with the immediate. Let's start with the immediate because that, that's the one that really um, got me scratching my head. Between July and 20, between July this year and, and December, you are projecting to spend almost 2.8 billion yes. to kickstart the economy yes. somewhat. I mean, yes. specific areas. Yes, okay. We, we, we are two months to the end of the year. Yes. Where's, where's the funding? Where, where, where's the funding? Well, we haven't seen it. No, no, well, today and I think yesterday or so, the Bank of Ghana Monetary Policy Committee has been going through their numbers and perhaps may even be a better... Uh, may I say, arbiter in these matters beyond we the politicians. But specifically, if you take the 2020 appropriation as revised, mm. we're looking at over 100 billion Ghana cities. The appropriation for 2020 alone is over 100 billion Ghana cities. Mm. So if you have an administration that is saying that in a three-year period, in a medium-term period, it seeks to spend um, 100 billion cities. Dollars. It is not, no, the cash no, so, so 100 billion cities, dollars. but that comes yes. down to some around 20 billion. No, I'm coming. I'm saying... Because, first of all, the argument is that, wow, 100 billion cities, why are you going but to that's get That's a it? lot of money. And I'm coming to that. I'm saying that this year alone, the government of Ghana is spending 100 billion but you, cities but you, what, 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 me what, what you fail to acknowledge is that, let no, talk about this year. But, yes. no, sorry, sorry, if you may. If this I haven't explained the case program. I, I will, I'll come yes. to that. But, but just a point, because <laughs> yeah. oh, this is central to the case yes, yes, yes. Same question I just asked him about what the OECD is saying. Yes. Everything you're saying must be factored within the COVID environment. Absolutely. So, so the the fact that you managed to you know appropriate what ten billion, hundred billion, hundred billion cities that's this year, COVID year. Well, yeah, but but COVID's implications is going to run for the next projections. But I am coming to years. that specific point that therefore it is not strange. You know, there are ten billion dollars mm. in today's terms. It's about sixty billion cities. True. Mr. Mahama, in his own words, says that he borrowed fifty-four billion cities in his four-year tenure. Those are his words, not mine. In fact, he tries to make an argument uh, uh, comparing nominal GDP year on year. And everybody knows we never do that in economics because you haven't adjusted for inflation. But that's a different debate. So they are talking of about 60 billion CDs. I'm saying to you that this year alone, the government of Ghana has spent 100 billion. So it's not strange if the government says that over a three-year period, it will spend 100 billion in some specific areas. Now, that 100 billion is broken into two parts. Let's go. There is about a 30 billion that the government of Ghana seeks to make available, to raise and to appropriate. And I'm giving you the example that this year alone, we have done 100 billion. So 30 billion is not out of the woods. Now, the other 70 billion, we are quite clear in our minds that we are doing it, and we are clear, we are not leveraging um, some tax revenue it's a private sector. to so uh, tell me how uh, uh, create debt. Yeah. We are doing clear public-private partnership. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you. There are a number of areas that we believe you need to invest in to get this Ghanaian economy back on track and uh, uh, flying full throttle. 
and we don't believe that you box at all in no, no. a great <laughs> industry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. You, Coco, you, because you've not read our manifesto carefully. Oh, I have read you it. You haven't. And so I'm I'm point you that's why I'm quoting you from let, pages. Let me point you to that's why I'm quoting your pages. pages. So I'm, I'm going to quote the pages to Please you. Please do. But um, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Kojo repeatedly thinks that the big push is one, the main thing. No, the big push is one leg of what we want to do. And because, be, because you were talking about big push, I'm coming there. So let me just come in. I heard him speak on the case. And he talked about the fact that 70 million, billion, uh, billion Ghana cities going to come from private sector. Mm. And he said PPP. Yeah. I challenged him to show me their re track record. They should show me one PPP in the last four years that you have successfully executed. Zipline. Zipline? Yes. How much? How much is Zipline? Oh, no. Zipline zip is on the budget of the state. It's not. Please, it's on the please, budget please, of the please, state. Please, you please, remember please, we had a discussion. Please, please, please. We remember Who's we had a discussion. It? Government Who's of Ghana. It? Government please, of Ghana. Please, and please, then please. also. Please. Zipline Look, is a public private partner. Look, it's, but, but it's, it's a production by the finance lease. No, no, it's a finance lease. No, no, please. It is not public private partnership. Let's not change the goalposts. You have asked me to name one public private And I'm telling you, it's not zip line. Me. Oh, please. Zip line is a finance lease. It's, it's a public... I, I debated this and I went on it. Executing it's it. a private organization selling a service to the state. What is a public private partnership? Paying. What is a public private so, partnership? So, so what, what, what are you trying to say? <laughs> 70 million, <laughs> 70, 70 billion, 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 approximately uh, 11 to 12 billion US dollars, more than the NDC's big push. And you are telling me that uh, we should use zip line to compare to No, that. you've asked me one we example. Use. So give me another one. And I've given you so, one and I'm telling you that the zipline is not the case. We have more so even, public private even, partners. Even, you asked the you, question, you, you, but well, yeah, you have not done that. No, I have told you, you about zipline. So, so yeah, yeah. It is a so, fact that zipline is nothing but a finance lease. No, please. I have you, debated you don't want to spend it. I've raised the issue. I mean, so go to, the big, tell you, go to the big issues. What I'm saying is that the MPP have not been able to tell us how they are going to fund a hundred million US dollars. hundred billion US dollars. You've just done that. No, I... <laughs> but, but you don't you say 70 billion, 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 billion. Sector, I mean, that, what, that is, how, On which projects are you going to fund how it How exactly? I mean, that... Well, you see, that's if, 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 if it's time... If it's time... You asked me to... Even... No, even... 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 I have demonstrated. I've shown you the map of Ghana. I've shown you specific projects that we are going to fund it. I have given you how much of the 10 billion is going to this specific project. Really? I have told you, yes, I said 7 billion. I have told you, I said it, he was here. He listened to me, didn't you hear that? I said it. You said and 3 I said, billion is going to come from uh, so, No, well. 3 billion is going to go to social. Social, and then, and then 7, 7 billion, billion is going to go to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Self-financing. Self-financing. Self -financing. And I'm telling you, that based on this analysis, it is clear how we're going to fund it. Yet, he has not been able to tell me the 7 Seven seven hundred seventy billion US dollars, Ghana cities, how the where the projects are going to go, of which the private sector is going to come in. And I challenge him, he should provide me the list in their manifesto, the page numbers, oh. for me to know <laughs> exactly what project that you are going to invite the private sector to participate with you. It is it how that you intend to, to collateralize the Ghana investment infrastructure? Let me tell you to finance is the a, big is a, uh, uh, that isn't the case. Okay. The NDC's objective is simple. The Ghana Infrastructure and Investment Fund plays a major role in infrastructure development of this economy. In fact, it's the country's self first sovereign wealth fund. We believe that it should be funded. Sadly, the NPP, contrary to their own words, they have failed to fund the Ghana Infrastructure and Investment Fund. To the extent that today, the Infrastructure and Investment Fund is struggling to have resources to do what they are supposed to do by law. In fact, two and a half percent of the value added tax is supposed to go into the Ghana infrastructure. Which, you, claim, which you said in your manifesto that you'll restore. So what we are saying is we are going to restore to ensure that that money goes there. You know what they have done? What they've done is that they've used the money for consumption instead of for infrastructure. They pulled the money from infrastructure for consumption. And I challenge him, you should prove it to me that it's still infrastructure. That's what they did. And again, we said that a minimum uh, up to 5% of the annual budget funding amount, 25% of the annual budget funding amount, ABFE, all your money, should go to the Ghana Infrastructure and Investment Fund. Since they came to office, they've given them zero. Zero. So they have no record in infrastructure. In fact, in the last three years, three and a half years, almost four years now, they have consistently spent on capital expenditure less than 3%. 
three percent of the capital expenditure of, 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 of the, the total budget. Yeah, but the economy is not only about infrastructure. Is it? <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's all about infrastructure. Mm. So um, you, we are talking about big push. Yeah, that's what that's your question. Yeah. And so we are but talking beyond, about beyond because you've really yes. explained the so, big push. So to let the me talk about the beyond the big push. Just let me talk about the economy about, and jobs. Yeah, so by the so way. let and me so the take, take you to the real sector. Very important. Let me take you to the real sector of the uh, of our money manifesto. And it's simple. If you were to look at our uh, manifesto, we said reviving the rail sector to stimulate economic growth and jobs. And we said we have come out with a policy called Ghana First. And Ghana First has 16 areas that can create jobs. And you can refer to it, page 35 of the mm. manifesto. We talked about the fact that agri and agribusiness is key. And we have even said that, given the opportunity, we are going to change the name of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to be called Ministry of Agri and Agribusiness so that we can take care of the entire value chain. Mm. It has a major, major, major potential, limitless, that we believe it should be funded. The issue of pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical industry in this country is underutilized, and we believe that. That sounds very aligned to what the MPP yes, does. And, and this is what we are, well, we are talking about. So, we so you both agree that, that this is where the money should go? We, we're talking about health tourism. We talked about light manufacturing, including accessories and assembly. You that we're talking about. All of these ones. Yeah, we so you talked about. It's in your, it's yes. in your manifesto we're, we're, as well. Some of them are in, in, in their manifesto. Some of them, not everything here. So now we know who's educational who services. Are. They are copying <laughs> us, isn't it? He doesn't know what he's talking After about. After we see, launched see, that, you see, delayed you. And then specifically, so we have all these sixteen items here. Now we are talking about. Let me start with agribusiness, for instance. Mm. Let us first of all, before you say you want to do something, you have to look at what you have competitive advantage in. Mm. And agribusiness is key. For instance, cocoa. Since Adam, what we do is often cocoa board. They just buy cocoa and oftentimes just syndicate with a syndicated law and possibly transfer, I mean, sell outside 90% of what they always buy. What we are saying is we are coming out with a legislation. We would reform the operations of Ghana Cocoa Board. Ghana Cocoa Board going forward will be mandated to process a minimum of 50% of the cocoa beans that they buy. And they can only sell 50% of the raw cocoa beans outside the country. They will have to look at working with private sector options. So the option of working with the private sector to at least add value to the cocoa that we actually process in this country, we, we, we have in this country. That in itself, from the analysis that we've run, shows that we can increase the value of cocoa approximately five times. In the last 10 years, we did an analysis and got to realize that we have benefited approximately about 18 billion US dollars from cocoa because of the fact that we syndicate it and the money comes in. But if we are to add value to it, we can increase it by five times, by just 50%. The evidence suggests, and then clearly, what we are saying is that isn't the only thing we're going to do. Gold, for instance, is a major thing. We see Indians coming into the economy, buy gold in raw form, and it goes out. But isn't that the, why they have a Ejapa? Gold? Because, right, yeah, I mean, gold? No, Ejapa has nothing to no, do with buying because gold. Private, Ejapa the, is the, the private, taking your mineral royalties, no, put it in an offshore, the, the private, offshore you, you entity, in, in and somebody you said it off. Indians come and make money off the gold. Yes. Why can't government use that same goal then? No, it has also nothing to listen to the story first okay, and then I you mean, conclude yeah, if, if it has I'm, to do I'm with just Japan. curious. It, it like has nothing to, to do with the Japan. Let, let me talk about it. Yeah, go, go on, go on. So on the issue of um, um, gold, so we're saying we're going to set up something like gold board. I see. Gold board. And it's in the manifesto, probably you have not looked at yeah, it. I haven't seen that. Okay. So no, it's no, in no, the manifesto. I mean, what, what is the so gold board? What, what, what we are saying is simple. You have the small scale mining situations that we have ourselves in, we put ourselves in currently. What we're saying is simple. Ghana Gold Board will be buying this gold from the small scale mining mm -hmm. companies, not the likes of New Mountain. They, they have their license and they will be allowed to. So those small scale mining companies will be selling directly to the Ghana Gold Board. Mm -hmm. Ghana Gold Board will process this gold and then sell out, just like Cocoa Board, buy the cocoa beans from the cocoa farmer 
and then they actually syndicate and sell to the processors. Mm, I see. So that is the model that we are talking about. Because it is there already. All what you do is to set up the gold board, give them funding so that they'll be able to buy the gold, sell it, process it, set up refineries, and add value to the, co to the gold. Can I In respond? itself, we'll be able to create yeah, some employment. Very, very briefly. Big time. Can so these are some of the things that we are talking about. Can I respond? Okay, so, so, the, the, so diversified areas of... Diversified. Could, 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 could you very if briefly anybody, go for a break and come back? If anybody is going to take our colleagues seriously, one of the first questions they were asking that, so all of these gold board ideas, etc. Where, where were they between 2012 and 2016? I mean, because, oh, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. When you say that, no, no, you're very no, wrong. No, no, I'm coming very to make a point. I'm coming. Because you had a very lovely opportunity to implement all of these things, and you never did. Now, about 90% of the things that we are doing, you know what they do? They mention it and then they say they will do more. And let me explain to you why. If you want to demonstrate that you are serious about agribusiness, the single most significant agri subsector in this country is cocoa. If you look at the tables as published, under agriculture, crops, they go specifically even for cocoa. So if you want us to believe you that you are serious about agribusiness, show us what you've done with cocoa. And I'll show you something, for example, cocoa and cocoa processing. Today you hear them trying to make a lofty promise that we are going to make a law that nobody can export more than 50% of our cocoa. It has to be produced here. You don't need a law to do that. You were here in this country having local processing companies. What was the growth in local production during your period? And what did you do to engineer that? By the time they were leaving power, local production of Ghana's cocoa was about 26%. A company like Wamco, on their watch, collapsed. About 254 workers laid off. Today, when we came to power, through a combination of credit and also building some uh, leverages between them and Cocoa Board in terms of supply, etc. Wamco is back on track. A number of other uh, cocoa processing companies, local cocoa processing companies, have received similar support. A and we have moved of, okay. local production from 26% to nearly 40%. According to, we need to verify this. Well, you can do your fact no, check. No, don't worry, don't worry. To what? Don't to worry. What? You, can, you, can, you can fact check me we'll on go. this one. If you think I'm not telling the truth, no, we'll fact go. check. Yeah. I'm making my claim. I'm saying that we have moved it from 26% to nearly 40%. Now, when we talk about cocoa today, ask the cocoa farmer at the end how much he's getting for it. We have all argued that we should try and make available at least about 70% of the FOB price to the cocoa farmer. Ask him in his day, how much were they making available to the cocoa farmer? In our day, if I take, for example, um, in the last three years, we did 83%, 76%, 76% in the past three years. Today, today, um, uh, an increase in cocoa uh, producer price has been announced. In addition, and if you are serious about supporting agribusiness, you ensure that a cocoa farmer gets more value. You've noticed that through ingenuity between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, we've managed to get a living income differential, about $400 extra per ton added to cocoa. Mm. If you want to show commitment uh, to agribusiness, these are the okay. numbers. Through pollination, through even making yeah, just, cocoa just subsidies and supply but, but, available to the, the cocoa finance farmer. minister, the, the point you made about your performance in that sector, true? Uh, just it's briefly, a, a maybe I'll rebuttal I'll do because yes, I want to take yes. a break. I, I have serious issues with what he's talking about. Briefly. Um, he's not, he doesn't have the facts that he's talking about. Oh. And I dispute them. Because clearly. What, what is the alternative you see, fact? You see, the, the, clearly, cocoa processing yes. this, in this country yes. did not come down under President Mahama as you're talking about. Oh, please. I didn't say it the, came down under President yes, Mahama. I said on about? your watch, when mm -hmm. you were leaving, it was 26%. Uh -huh. We have brought it up to 40, nearly 40%. So, 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 and so, so I agree you, it did not come no, down. No, no, relax. And then I asked you that. Okay. Show me where it was and the incremental you did and the kind of interventions you did. You then see, we compared so, the two. So, so what, what, what I said. said but, but so what are you talking about? They paid more to the cocoa farmer. No, they didn't. We have. We have paid more. We have paid. We have paid about 80% since when? Please, in the last three years, I'm just giving you the announcement. In the last three years, in the last three years, we've paid 83 percent, 76 percent, 76.63 percent of the FOB price to the cocoa farmer. Evans, when, Evans, I, I let, let me challenge this. You can uh, check this. Let, let me challenge this. Let, 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 let me challenge this. At the time you were leaving office, quickly. the cocoa farmer was getting 65.2 percent of the FOB oh, the price. Mm -hmm. So is we it, have delivered more it, for the cocoa farm. And say, if anybody talks about to being more committed... FOB prices to, to, okay, I want to take a break. No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, let, let me tell what you. What are you saying? Don't Let's not use, use FOB prices. Don't use the FOB prices what, what, to drop what, what, what I, I tell you what, I'm an expert in this thing. So let, what let, should let me we use? Briefly, you briefly. You see, briefly, what is happening is Cocoa Board used a formula called the net FOB prices. After deducting things that are given to the farmer, under their watch, they have reduced what goes to the cocoa farmer. And so, therefore, that means the percentage that goes to the cocoa farmer may be slightly more. 
But if you are to do the computations, then clearly you know that the cocoa farmer is worse off. What are you talking about? And that's what I'm do talking the about. I'm telling you this. I've done this. I've done this. this, this I'm telling you. But even the farmer, the higher FOB price. Let me put to Kodo. Yes. And Kodo, it is not the case that that under your watch, cocoa processing in Ghana has gone up. Really? And I tell you I'm why. Giving you data. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you why. Your data? I'm telling you why. What is your data? I'm telling you why. What is your data? I'm telling you why. Cocoa processing is often expressed in the percentage of the cocoa production. Mm -hmm. the cocoa production is coming down under their watch. What are and you talking so, about? Oh, what, 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 it is coming down. Okay, so, 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 a percentage of what you have I want to take a break. You are sitting at 26%. Look, you are sitting at 26%. Look. And FOB price is what everybody... Um, you are live on um, PM Expresses on the Joy News channel. Um, my guest is Kojo Ponkrumah, Information Minister, and Kesa Tofosi, uh, who is the former Deputy Finance Minister. Uh, just before we went for the break, we were, there was a big com conversation about um, the FOB, uh, of course, that uh, the net FOB sharing structure um, that farmers uh, benefit. And um, my, my friends at Imani had sent me the 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 cocoa board technical report for 2010 the 2010-2011 crop season uh, and the two, the 2017-2018 crop season and i see farmers mm -hmm. that as of 2017-2018 crop season it was 88.66% mm -hmm. right um john Mahama's time this is a, this is a 2016-2017 so 77.45% what was, what, was it, what was your percentage again that you performed? The data I have here is that in the last three years, we have done 76.63 in the last season, 76.09 the previous season, 83.04 the season before then. Okay, and, now, and, you, and, you, and you say... I'm, I'm saying during our time, the average was 77%. During your time, 70, 77%. Okay, so I, I see, I see, yeah. I mean, it's a talent because it's 70, you yeah. ended... At 77.45%. Yes, that's the average, 77%. No, but in 2017, 2018, they did 88.66%. That is one year. That's one year. So I mean, but but, but he has the, the latest. I mean, he's quoting from latest see, figures. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my concern is when you, you take the exit year. Oftentimes, I hear the MPP making analysis, and they often use 2016, 2016. NDC did not rule for one year. And so it's important for us to average it okay. and then come out with the position. Can and I so if us... he's talking about that, let us use averages can, no, no, and then make us... some meaningful but, but see, uh, arguments. Averages can deceive But you see, you. and if you apart from that, averages can deceive How? You. Because, for example, the 2011 GDP figure of 14%, uh -huh. when you put it together, yes. let's say in the first four years or even your eight years, mm -hmm. it gives you a certain average. Yeah. But Ghanaians know the reality at the end of 2016 that you were sitting at 3.4. Okay. So the exit figures matter. And, 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 and that is why I have, a, I have a problem with the you. The second point is very important. That's why I have a problem with you on that. But the but second point. Finally, in the one minute, let's, let's, let's move on to the jobs question. The second question, uh, uh, point, very quickly. He just said here that they were planning to make a law that you cannot um, export more than 50% of what? Now he's suggesting, just before the break, that you cannot use percentages and that you have to use the... Um, who, said, no, who said you cannot use before percentages? Before we went on the break, when I uh -huh. said that we had moved it from 26 on your tenor mm -hmm. to about 40%, mm -hmm. you suggested to me that it is rather important to look at the real numbers, mm -hmm. the volumes, can I, can I, not can the percentages can I of production. Okay. Let, 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 let me clarify that. If that is the case... You did not understand me. So no, it's no, important, I did. It's okay. important for me to clarify. Why are you saying 50% of production? It is important for me to clarify. Go ahead. Look, the formula is simple. You produce X amount of cocoa, true. of which you sell a percentage to the Ghanaian market that is for true. the purposes of processing. That is true. That percentage, if it is, let's say, you, 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 you produce, let's say, 100,000 metric yes. tons, 40% of 100,000 metric tons yes. is certainly higher than 20% uh, of you are absolutely okay, right. Thousand, you are yeah. absolutely right. That's what I'm so talking about. Why are you saying that? You are targeting 50%. Why are you targeting 50%? It's lower than yours. Why are you targeting 50%? The production is lower than yours. Why are you targeting 50%? So why are you producing more chances? Why are you targeting 50%? Let's go back to the issues, right? 
I want to. I want to. Well, we're going to eleven, by the way, so we, we could have a more more time to digest okay. this. Okay. L let's do the jobs question now. How you, in in the manifesto that I saw, your manifesto, you claim you have created two million jobs. Yeah. However, in looking for if you win elections, twenty twenty one to twenty twenty four, there's nowhere in your manifesto did you state how many more jobs you plan to create. In fact, you plan to spend twenty a hundred billion. Yeah. In three years, mm -hmm. you don't but, know where it's coming from. But, people. but, <laughs> we but you don't, where it's coming from. But, but you don't, we, but you don't, yeah. we don't tell it because jobs is a key question. Yeah, that money you're spending, how much jobs do you plan to create? The NDC does that in their 10 billion, they tell us what corresponding number of jobs, but yours is silent. No, the NDC tell us that they are going to spend 10 billion on a big push and to create 1 million jobs, of course. And you recall when I said that those 1 million jobs were tied to that. No, no, we never said those that. One one million I'm, 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 I'm going to about. give you the numbers. No, so, 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 let me clarify. Did you dispute that your 10 billion will no, create 1, it, 1 million it, jobs? We, did, we never said okay. the 10 billion is what is going to create the 1 million. No, 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 but that's what your manifesto is. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It said in Fed runs. In Fed runs, there are 1 million jobs. No. Read it. No, I want to read. Read it. I want to read what read it says. It. Show me the, the big push initiative. Yes, will involve an investment of ten billion dollars mm -hmm. over five years mm -hmm. to achieve that critical upgrade in social and economic infrastructure, mm -hmm. to create a platform mm -hmm. for the transformation of our economy in federance of our one million jobs plan. In federance, in federance, does it mean that is the only vehicle that is going to create a one billion? No, in federance, it is going to contribute, and we've done our model. So let me, if, if you give me the platform, so, I will so, explain so, to you. So, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, I have, uh, we have all the calculations. It, no, I have, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. I'll just, so just, I'm, I'm just, just a quick point, just a quick point. Could you all come to you yes. shortly? So you're saying that the one million jobs which you put in your manifesto. Yes. They, you deliver, you deliver more than the one million. You see, what we're saying is that. Just, just have, a short, just, just, I'll come to substantive. What we're saying is that we have other things put together. That is going to generate one million jobs in four no, years. No, you said in furtherance yes. of our one million jobs Agenda. plan. Yes, plan. right. That's it. Yeah. So, so the big push is going to help you achieve the one. Exactly, million. but not that is not the only vehicle that that you're okay, going so, to so use. So you're saying that there are collective number of vehicles exactly. that will all collectively exactly. deliver one million, the so, one million so, jobs. Okay. So, so the quick question now, I'll come to that. Think about that. Is the ten billion? How much of how many jobs you directly want to create from there? Ninety thousand a year. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll interrogate that when I return. Well, he's he's ninety thousand we'll, we'll a year. We'll, we'll we'll run all the model and yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. We'll, the model we'll come to that. We'll interrogate that. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. This, this, is, this is before I do this on page one of your manifesto. It's not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm no, no, put out no. a manifesto and we all read it on ah. one million jobs. So, so show then me what you've done. You show me what you have done and do some new calculations. You see, the guy is talking about. The guy is talking about. He doesn't even know how much jobs they are going to create. Oh come on. No you are the one changing the you don't even know. You have a manifesto. You have a manifesto. manifesto. You have got one million, million jobs. You can't now they ask me to one defend one it. Now you put so on effort to that. I have some ninety thousand jobs here. But you don't go there. You have to talk about one million jobs. Okay, okay. Tell me the jobs you are going to create. What is interesting about this? Don't worry. Don't worry. What is happening? What are the jobs you are going to create? What is happening? You have no credibility to talk about one million jobs. I'll come to that. Don't worry. What is happening? Let me ask the question. How many jobs are there? No, we have quantified it. I will no, no, speak no. to that, I'll, I'll come to you, could, uh, so, but could you answer the question for me? You say you've created, you managed to quantify the number of jobs you created, and even that is question because you have to break it down from where the jobs are, two million. But in the next four years, which is where you're selling to everybody watching That's you, it. you haven't told us, you're spending 10 billion on the taxpayers' money, and yet you can't tell us how many jobs you're going this to create. This is not a one-on-one -on -one interview. Yes. This is a debate with our true, true, true. key but, but I'm coming, I'm coming. You've asked the question. Okay. Let me answer. It's yeah. a debate with our key opponent. So we have an opportunity to do this friendly interrogation with yeah. what we are saying. I you, he asked you a question. Oh, and it's simple. Question. So why are you running away from you? No, 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 that in the last three and a half years, we have created one million jobs. Three and a half years. One million jobs. No, Sorry. Two, 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 million. two million jobs. In it's fact, changed. Two Negative million. It has changed now. It's on page <laughs> nine of our manifesto. It hasn't changed. It's not a new A4 sheet. It's, it's an error. It's on page it's nine of our manifesto. It's actually two million and fifty-five thousand and ten jobs. Okay. We've accounted for all of it on page nine of our manifesto. I'll go into it. In fact, we expect that by the time we hit our full four-year cycle, would have done significantly even better than that because this is a cutoff uh, between 2017 and 2019. It doesn't include 2020 issues. Of course, 2020, the economy um, is not going to grow at the same speed, but at least for these first three years, 
we are accounting for 2 million and 55,000 and 10 jobs. Now, fancy a situation where the NDC that is offering an alternative proposition says that in four years, they hope to offer 1 million jobs. That is half of what we have done in three years. <laughs> but but well, I'm coming. I'm coming. Two million... I'm coming. I, have, I have my five minutes or my 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, go on. What they are promising and claiming they will even do better than us is half of what we have done in three years. Number two, I have explained to you earlier that records matter. Records matter. If you take uh, our job initiatives, for example, in the public sector alone, 778,706 jobs. If I challenge Atu to give me a figure of how many public sector jobs they created in the last four years before they left power, we can do a good comparison. And then you can validate and tell your audiences. In the formal private sector, when you check from SNIT, you will find 267,939 jobs. In the government job creation programs, you will find a million 8,365 jobs. When you put it all together, it's 2 million 55,010 jobs in three years. Our friends on the other side who say they are on a rescue mission. The rescue mission delivers half of what we have delivered in three years. Because your that's jobs are phantom. Point. It doesn't exist. Ah, that's what brings me to the <laughs> second point. These phantom. same colleagues on the other side who claim that, um, you know, jobs like construction jobs or um, other jobs from our programs were um, a lazy approach to the job creation question. Now, when you interrogate their job numbers, I say to you, and I still insist, that this one million jobs they are coming with, if you go to their page 25 of their manifesto, is construction related. It's from this, there are 10 billion be, phantom projects. Because, because which is you not don't happening. know. Let me land. You don't Let know. me land with my um, argument. But if anybody has credibility for creating jobs, I mean, yesterday we were at the uh, nation building update. NAPCO alone, 100,000 jobs. The National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan, about 92,000 jobs. Um, uh, the National Education Authority, 35,380 jobs. The numbers are there on page 9 of our manifesto. I ask anybody to go there. But you see, if anybody has credibility for creating jobs and for losing jobs, we are the ones who have a credibility. We're talking about credibility. We have credibility for creating jobs. They have credibility for killing jobs. And I'll explain to you why. And they hope that Ghanaians will have a short memory. That is how come they can have the moral audacity to come and promise one million jobs, uh, uh, thinking that we've forgotten that four years ago they were in power. They were in power four years ago when we had something we called Doomso, and people think it was just, oh, Doomso, let's talk about it and go. Let me give you some numbers from Doomso. Eight, and this is an ESA report, 2017, August has published. 885 manufacturing firms lost about 250 million Ghana cities in terms of value. Mm. 285 businesses mm. collapsed. Doomso, this is from an ESA August 2017 report. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, in a report of July 2015, say that about 13,000 jobs had been lost. This is the administration that did not inherit Doomsaw from anybody, created it, lost 13,000 jobs, 285 businesses, 250 million Ghana cities. And now they turn around and tell us that they have more credibility to create 1 million jobs when we have created 2 million jobs in three years. This is the administration that promised us that the job creation uh, uh, initiatives that the Kufu administration had introduced, like JIDA, hmm? mm -hmm. like the ones that we were talking about for SADA, they were going to do more, plant trees and get people engaged, etc. In the end, we all recall what it became. It became a spectacle that the Supreme Court described as a platform for them to create schemes, to loot money from it, and to share. These are the people who say they have credibility. That's what Atu is telling me, that they have credibility when it comes to um, creating jobs. My so question, for us, it is pretty simple. You, you haven't answered my question. I will question. come to that. I'm laying a foundation to come there. Okay. Because these foundations are important. If you don't and everybody uh, pretends it's forgotten, if you can, if you can then we move the into a blatant comparison of I things. I think you've laid the foundation. Yes. So the question. So, the, so, so, this, so this 100 billion you're spending, how many jobs are you creating out of that? We estimate that what we have done in the first three years, if nothing at all, we can do that plus more, at least about 2.5 to 3 million jobs. If in these first three years, we have done 2 million jobs. 
and, and, and it's from in a manifesto. 2017 to... Why? Well, he's asking me to give him a oh, number. So it's a new number. It's, it's, no, no, it's coming from right. a mouth. We didn't o put a number manifesto. in it and change it to. You are the one who put a number in it. It's coming from a mouth. 2.5. He's asking me to tell him okay. how many jobs we think will correspond to our um, uh, uh, agenda. And I'm billion. telling him mm. that in three years, we have done 2 million jobs. I've proven him the numbers. I've mm -hmm. challenged you to prove your numbers. I'm going to prove <clears> it. And I've shown you what you collapsed in the last uh, three, uh, three to four years of doing so. so, so Mr. And I'm saying mm -hmm. that in the next four years, we will do nothing less than what we have done in our No, but you haven't, you haven't, I've given you're you a playing figure. safe here. No, no, I mean, I've given you a figure. I've told you that no. nothing less than this two million so, well, that give, we have done. Give, no, give, give, me, have a, told give you, me a figure. I have told you that we so have, you, you claim, told you, you a figure. So you've done two, two million yes, over the last Yes, and the breakdown is here. And I'm so telling you that we are doing how nothing many? less than that. We are doing nothing less than that. We are doing nothing less than two, 2.5 million uh, out of these initiatives that we are talking about. Okay, so, so Listen, what? So, M so, so NBSSI alone, NBSSI alone, NBSSI alone mm -hmm. has a medium term program that is going to create 3 million jobs over an eight year period. Yesterday, they did a whole presentation on it. NBSSI. 3 alone. million jobs. Yes. In where? Over, well, they would, have to, they would have to give you an opportunity but, but, to but, interrogate no, their but, but, but you, These are small scale industries. These are small scale industries. Yeah. They cut across the entire country, they cut across various subsectors of uh, the sub industrial no, I mean, strata. But, 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 isn't, but, but, saying, but isn't this an I'm afterthought, saying, right, Mikojo? Because if you're spending a hundred billion, and yet the manifesto doesn't link it to how many jobs it will create, no, which is one listen, of the biggest problems we have. Do, but why? There are several initiatives in the manifesto that are not linked directly to jobs. No, if but, we but, talk but, of education, no, I'm not every part but, of the no, manifesto. Sorry, 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 but the Ghana Care specifically mm -hmm. has what, as one of its main goals delivering jobs. True or false? Listen. True. I'm coming. No, no, why? Are you answering for me? Take no, your no, time. No, 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 why? no, 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 no
that we encourage you to fact check, to, you know, to check with these agencies mm. whether these numbers are correct or not. We have the capacity to do nothing less than this and more. And I've given you a figure that will be doing nothing less than about 2.5 out million. of this. Okay. Events. Okay? Yeah. And I refer you again to our colleagues Events. that what they are even promising yeah. is half of what we well, have Well, Events. Mr. Tufos on the yes. By the way, we have a record on infrastructure. Events. We have published 18,000 no, infrastructure projects. Toilets. We have uh, asked we'll them to, to publish the yes, which yeah. they haven't. Yeah. All they do is that they came yeah. and say, yeah. one, two, three, four, five are not true. Events. And Events. we tell you that you've if you discount that five, okay. we still it's have 18,000 infrastructure this projects. This is my time, and so, so you can so, eat so, it. So let's go into yours. Events, first of all, let me say to Kojo, he made a point that NDC has a track record of collapsing business. And I was surprised that he's the one saying that. We all know the mess they have created in the banking sector. I'm happy you went there. The in fact, collapsed in this economy. I'm happy you went there. We'll have some time on it. You see, Evans, let me say, say something to you. This administration, at the minimum, they have caused the collapse of a minimum of 400,000 jobs in the banking sector. That's not true. And, and that's based on what was the no, we, we, we have done the analysis. We've come out. They collapsed 300,000. So, so this is NDC analysis. NDC analysis. But this is a yes. joke. But what is a joke? But, but, but yours, yours, yours is not a joke. 10,000 jobs. Yours is not a joke. He what said, you are talking to me is not a joke, but this is a joke. He said no, numbers. Come on, please. He said no, numbers. But, 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 so, 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 so you are talking about the context. He said numbers. No, so you're, you're, he said that he's created planting for food and jobs. I have asked you to check. That is the biggest thing you're talking about. He said that's the biggest joke you're talking about. 10,000 jobs. So please, you said you have done your own analysis. You have collapsed in excess. The Bank of Ghana says 10,000 jobs. In excess of 400,000 jobs. We're at risk. But even back to the Bank of Ghana says 10,000 jobs. That is strict proof. When I was speaking. Strict proof. When he was speaking, I was quiet. Yes. Allow me to make my point. So these are your own calculations. What are you talking about? IMDC's calculation. And I said it's MDC's calculation. And we run press conferences. But that's difficult. You have statistical service. You have a Bank so, of so, Ghana, so, so, you so, can't cite any of these reputable, incontrovertible of, so, so you, you, I don't trust Bank of Ghana's numbers on this wow. matter. Wow. On this you, matter. You are a deputy, on this matter. You are a deputy finance I, minister. I, I tell you why and I'm you saying don't that. trust Bank of Bank Ghana's, Ghana's numbers. numbers. On this matter. And, 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 why? And, and, on this matter. Because they are corporate. I am shocked. They caused the collapse of these banks. Told, and, and then, as a deputy then, finance minister, you, you are on the board on of the Bank matter, of Ghana, were you? On this matter, you're on the board I've of been on the board for Bank of Ghana, for, uh, in the, on, on the Bank of Ghana for the last four years. And you're saying today let, that let you me don't trust the I Bank of trust, Ghana numbers. Listen, on this matter. A lot of your former colleagues Please, are there listen listening to, me, to you on tonight. On this matter. This is and sad. I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. Bank of Ghana supervised the collapse of these banks. They supervised the collapse of these financial institutions. And you think they will come and indict themselves? You think they will come and indict themselves for the mess they've created in the financial sector? You think so? No. They will not do that. I, I'm sorry. And that is why I'm telling you that I do not trust them on this matter. On this matter. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. Even, uh, let, me go on. For, let me go on. Let me say. Let me go on. I'll, I'll let you go on. I'll yes. let you go on. You said that minorities calculating what 400,000 jobs. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, wa I want to I want to quote to you. Why are total what, number of jobs in uh, the uh, bank? Could you, could you, could you, could you, I want to quote to you what the minority caucus said recently. As recently as 3rd September um, 2019, yes. right? Um, last year, when you held the press conference. Now, speaking at the press conference addressed by the member of parliament for Borga Central, Isaac Adongo, he put the number, he said, per, per the, according to them, per their gathered evidence, over 17,000 workers, in fact, he was yeah. very specific. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Very specific. He, he gave breakdown. Yes, very, that 17,350 workers have lost their jobs after the closure of 343, you know, institutions. So where's this the is a microfinance alone. So where's the this is a microfinance. So he's making reference to microfinance alone. Come on, please hold on. So, so let, let, let me go on. So, sorry, sorry. Let me go. So the microfinance, microfinance alone is, is, is lower of the level. It's, no, but, it's, but from seventeen thousand to four hundred thousand. Listen to me. I'm making my argument. It's, it's listen to a me. huge leap. You see, they have collapsed companies that are supervised by Securities and Exchange Commission. They have collapsed microfinance institutions. They have collapsed. Um, Universal banks. They've gone ahead to collapse finance houses. Mm. All of this, there is eight corresponding job losses. And we're saying in excess of 400,000. Apart from that, and we're talking of direct and indirect jobs, 400,000. That is gone. I mean, I'm surprised. Direct and indirect if jobs. Even since September last year, you said 17,000. <laughs> no, 17,000, one leg of it. No, I get it, I get it. I, 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 I mentioned a number of them. Them. This is my point to you. That time, the banks had already gone down. Yes. They all, all, yes. all, all the, yes. all the uh, institutions that you mm -hmm. mentioned right now, they were, they were already down in September when you're doing the press conference. Evans. By that time, you Evans. had 17,000. Evans. Evans, do you know what it means when a bank is collapsed or a microfinance institution collapses 
and then a businessman's capital is locked out there to the extent that that person is not getting his money back for the purposes of business. Have you quantified so that the ripple effect? This is what I'm talking okay, about. So, so ad address, ad this is what I'm talking okay, about. Enough of this. Ad 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 this is what I'm talking about. So, Evans, it is wrong for us to just look at the banking sector as, an, mm. as a body yeah. alone, then look at the, the job losses relating to that alone. Yeah, okay. Let, let this wrong. Address your Evans, job numbers. Address my your job number numbers. Is, yeah. My argument is simple. Okay. This administration have caused others to lose their jobs mm. from the banking sector and others whose money has been locked down, locked up as a result of their negligence in the management of the banking sector cleanup exercise. So as a result of that, these companies had to close down. Some of them had to fold up. Others will ha have to scale down. All of them, they had to reduce the jobs that they created in the economy. And we are saying it's in excess of 400,000. Mm. In spite of that, you are here. This government went to parliament, introduced an amendment to the Customs Act, and they are saying that salvage vehicles are going to be banned. Mm. Have they quantified the job losses? The analysis show it will have a ripple effect. Also. Have they quantified the job losses? So where is their credibility? But they are creating jobs in the opposite. How many, how many jobs are they creating in the opposite? But let me tell you, that industry itself goes in tandem with a financing scheme. The financing schemes does not, is not available in our economy currently. Mm. In fact, the very banks that will support this very industry, they've collapsed them. Okay. Uh, so so, let, let's so what are we talking about? Can, can they we, have no credibility. Okay. And, and back to this point before I take you to this. Okay. There are so-called two million jobs. Two million jobs. You've done your own analysis. They are telling us here that planting for food and jobs alone has created 762,300 uh, jobs. How could you? 762,000 existing farmers, you've yeah, given them yeah, fertilizer, yeah. and so you've created a job. No, you see, you've so not when you give a you've not fertilizer followed, to somebody, you've, not you, you've created a job. You've not let me come in. Because let, never let, let me come in. Is never said it, 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 you read, I'm, I'm telling you something. National okay. Identification Authority, 35,380 jobs. If you employ somebody to go and work three months, Huh? In my constituency to register people, you've created a job. But the people that you Impressive. say you are going to... Impressive. In fact, in some cases... The come people on, that come you on, say listen you to me. To let me, let me make my point. Those are permanent jobs. Let me make my point. Those are permanent jobs. 35,000. Those are permanent jobs. Please, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I make my point? You finish, I'll respond. Recently, the National Identification Authority were in my constituency to register us. In the end, they worked for about six weeks and left. So... That is a permanent job, and MPP should be proud of it. They've created it here, 35,000 jobs. Let me tell you, all these but, but, people, but all these people, all these people way, are self-employed. Some of them finish. are teachers already, employed by the state, and finish. he's counting them, double counting. Some of them are working. So what is he talking about? Let, let me go on and tell you. Outgrower Value Chain Fund, huh? you've created 7,254,000. ,000. Give me evidence on that. <laughs> we were in Parliament when we all worked on it. This thing came to Parliament work. That, this number, I dispute them. You finish our response. Let me go on. National Commercial Agriculture Project, 11,481 jobs. And you went on to say that public sector, you've created 778,000. Let me tell you, the public sector payroll today, the numbers on the public sector payroll is slightly under 600,000. And he's telling us that they've created 778,000 jobs. So everybody there, you employ them <laughs> and MPP. My God. Can I respond? My God, and you, you tell me you, you, you have credibility. No, Can I, I respond? Oh, I'll come to you. 600,000 jobs under the public sector payroll. You finish and and you're respond. telling me that 778,706 uh, were, were employed by you. I said finish okay. My God, okay, what are you talking about? Okay. So you have 2 billion people that you claim you have, you have employed. Million, not million. Not 2 million, million people yeah. that you claim yeah. you have employed. It's just nothing but phantom. Okay, so so what, what about what so about, let me tell you something. What about what about your under what NDC about under NDC? You you are breaking down under NDC. 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 The various we are realistic and we know what we want to achieve. Okay, so so let, let me see. So something. Yeah, we are saying. So this is your this is the NDC's <laughs> breakdown yes. of the. If, if we can if we can pick this for me. You see, this is the NDC's breakdown of the of the jobs they will create uh, if if they get opportunity to win power on December seven. As you can see on the screen there, it's a breakdown of infrastructure will create ninety thousand. Okay, so this is what the ninety thousand is. So the big push will create 90,000. A year. A year. This is a yearly basis. Agriculture and agribusiness will create 35,000 jobs. Light manufacturing will create 30,000. Coastal landscape and forest management, etc., will create 12,000, and so on and so forth. 
I mean, so this so, is your calculation. This is our calculation. How, and we run how, the do model. how do you come to these numbers? Say, I'm, I'm curious. We run the model. So let's start with a big push. <laughs> okay. We, we run the model. So 10 billion, 90,000. Okay. 10 billion for only 90,000 jobs. You say um, um, the big push, as I told you, it has two legs. Okay. And what we are saying is we're going to scale it up year one. And year one, which is the conception year, the mm. first year, you will start the project and you scale it up going forward. Mm. So we run the numbers. We've worked with experts in the area. The project will start. They mobilize to start, uh, to the, um, what do you call it, to commence the construction. And we are saying year one, it will be able to create 90,000 jobs. Oh, okay. So this is year one. This is year so one. So you multiplied this by this, four. This is 2021. Okay. So but it, it, it can't okay. be one on one just like that. Okay. Because when, when the project scales you, up, so the, you increase it okay. going forward. Then agriculture and agribusiness, year one, and based on the policies the that we put together. The people go? You say, this after after you say, the four years, let, let, let me go? tell you. If you create a railway from Accra to Kumasi, you will run the railway after construction. Mm -hmm. You have people that will operate the lo locomotive. Mm -hmm. You have track workers, those who maintain the, stack, uh, the track. All of this are permanent. How about if you build a road? Look, because we're also I building mean, roads. We, 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 we build roads as well. I'm uh -huh. telling you, but that's what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm so quantifying those who are them. building the roads, where do they go? Can I tell you something? Yes, please. When you are constructing something, certainly, you will be able to create temporary jobs. And after you finish construction, you proceed. You some of them will me become now. permanent jobs. Okay, so I guess the question is that the 90,000, for example, you have made my push, point now. You can go ahead. How much of that is temporary jobs? How much is permanent? You see, some of them are professionals. Okay. You have engineers on the road, won't you? Yes. You have engineers actually working on the track. I to tell the truth. And you have laborers. No, come on. Can you have them do the work? No, but then after that, they won't have a job. What is the problem with that? It's not just about engineers. What's the problem with that? So that's but, but at least you are employing them. So be candid you, you, you about it. We've been them candid. for four years. We've been you, you, if we've somebody been works for two months, to talk it, it is full time employment for you. You are saying what that are you talking about? This is what you're talking about. You, talking about. They, this you are finish a level over the period. Finish a level okay. Okay. Over the period. Over the five year we, period we, that we, we are talking we have, about. We have five minutes to wrap up. So I wish this debate continues. But you see, we've done two hours. You see, you have pharmaceutical industry. And we are saying what we're going to do with the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. Based on that, we're saying year one is going to create 21,000 Okay, jobs. in the pharmaceutical industry alone? In the pharmaceutical industry alone. Coastal landscape and for, uh, forest management, etc. we're saying it's going to create 12,000 jobs. Mm. And we have specific policies in the manifesto to support each to deliver, of this. Yeah. Each of this. That is our position. This has nothing to do with the pu public sector. And let me take you to the public sector, the issues that they are, they are talking about. Can He's I saying that they have created... Let me wait, 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 we did public sector gap analysis. And this is a policy document I can give it to you under NDC. We okay. did it. This is when you did whilst you were in government or this is in Recently. We, we just did it. I see. So let me Proud see. This. Our manifesto. Human resource gap analysis. Okay. So this is what you informed see, your manifesto draft. You see, so as I said, you must have There's not a lot of work. Yeah. Everything. Sure we've done a lot of work. And let me let me you you bring it. So give us a standing so, ovation. Yeah, well, so so let's let's like briefly one minute. Let's wrap up. You are saying that the public sector can accommodate approximately 367,000. Mm. But you see, you cannot employ them in year one. Okay. So you have to scale it over a four year period and ensure this is done. And we've shown you evidence, the sectors that require some form of employment based on the gap analysis. We look at our situation, look at world standard and benchmark it and look at the numbers. Mm. So clearly some work has been okay, done. Okay, great. I mean, two minutes. So he should tell us two what minutes, they have done we need to in government. So I want to spend my two minutes dealing with Atu's claims that the Bank of Ghana data is not believable. I think it's a very sad spectacle. On this matter? I think it's a very sad spectacle to hear from him. And uh, I think viewers and everybody, you know, we may have a very heated exchange, but we have a lot of respect for each other. I think it's very sad that we but are don't putting... Don't be sad because I mean it. We are putting the Bank of Ghana, we are throwing the Bank of Ghana under the bus because it inures to our political benefits. And let me explain to you why. The Bank of Ghana has very credible data that everybody around the world looks to. If you want to make a case that you have done an extrapolation beyond the 10,000 direct jobs that were in these institutions, from banking to um, uh, asset management companies, mm. about, about 10,000, that the Bank of Ghana and the Security and Exchanges Commission argue were at risk. And there are about 6,000 plus of them that have been saved 
as a result of the rationalization that the uh, uh, purchase and assumption transactions did. You can say that fairly. But you cannot say that the Bank of Ghana's data should be disputed and that you have done your own analysis of about 400,000 jobs. I'm tempted to say this, your, uh, what was the expression that you guys used? This comfortable lead analysis that you have done. We've seen your um, analysis before. The last time you did analysis on something as critical as the election. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let, 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 I have two minutes. Now you have one minute more. I have two minutes. I'm sorry. We've seen your analysis before. It is not a basis for us to throw the credibility of the Bank of Ghana under the bus. Listen. They, they've done what a terrible happened, job on this what, Well, every time you come up with your own analysis, when I mean, international organizations come back and say that, yeah, this is your analysis. Minute, 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 just minute, this is your analysis. Minute, just empty. The international organizations, IMF, everybody, they come and tell us that this your analysis are bogus. But let us not use it to throw the Bank of Ghana under the bus. We had a challenge with our financial services crisis, which didn't start today. He started on the watch of Mr. Mahama. He admitted it in 2016. He did not put any alternate proposition on the table on how to deal with it. The only thing they did was that they were giving them emergency liquidity assistance. As you have seen, it didn't solve the problem. It has taken new governors of the central bank to request for new money to deal with the problem once and for all. What is most important is that depositors' funds have been secured. Those in the banking sector, 100% paid. Those in the non-banking institutions, it was about 96%. They are gradually coming to the end of that one. The Securities and Exchange Commission has the opportunity to conclude theirs. In Mr. Mohammed's day, when about 82 organizations collapsed, he didn't pay anybody a dime. Mm. Today, they want to claim that they have credibility in, in when it seconds, comes to deal with financial why, why, I don't why, think why, why, why can take 35,000 jobs from NIA in your analysis? Because we believe that even temporary jobs are jobs. Re really? He is just admitting. Why, but, but you said he is just to, admitting. The people will, will, be, out of, will, will be out of job in, I'm, I'm in two weeks. He is claiming that there are 90,000 jobs that are coming from his big He's push. also admitted that there are some temporary ones. He tried to hide the fact that there were temporary jobs. We are being forthright with it. And we are counting it as part of what we have done. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Kojo. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I mean, next week we are doing health on uh, Manifesto Tracker. Uh, so you want to stay with us. I'm grateful to the Information Minister, Kojo Ponkrumah. Uh, thank you. They sold their manifestos to you. Um, I hope you've decided where to pitch your tent tonight on PM you didn't Express quantify, Manifesto you didn't Tracker. Quantify. No, you are using <laughs> <laughs> you got a recipe to change your jobs. Uh, to change your jobs. <laughs>